Good afternoon. This is WFED 106, Brian Gilbert. Today I'm going to give instruction on how to inspect a, a DeWalt circular saw. It's a direct drive circular saw. We're going to do an inspection of an entire saw and make sure it's ready for use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my saw. I'm going to unroll my cord and get it ready for use for my inspection. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to check my cord. Make sure there's no frays, no cuts, no nicks. Make sure that my prongs are not bent. This tool here is actually a double insulated tool, so it doesn't have the third plug for the ground because it's double insulated. But we're going to do a thorough inspection. The cord seems to be fine, looks very well. Just going to check for any broken parts, make sure that the guard is functional, there's no obstructions or anything broken. Make sure that our base is fully adjustable and it's lockable. It has a device there to lock it down. Make sure that it locks securely. This seems to be fine. <clears throat> We're going to check our base plate. Make sure that it's all good. Everything looks good. No cracks. Just a few scratches, but no cracks, no dents, no bend, bent places. Also, I want to check This works functionally. You can still see all of my angles on there. They're all visible, so we can see for our bevel side. Snug that back down. Then we're going to go to check our blade. Now, this is a seven and a quarter inch circular saw. Our blade on this saw, as you can tell, it's kind of got black residue. It's been hot. It's been burned. It is very dull. Got some missing teeth, so I'm going to show you how to uh, change out this blade for a new blade before we start our work. Uh, we're going to use a framing blade. There's all different kinds for finish, all different sorts of blades. But we're going to use a rough cut for framing because that's what we're going to be using the saw for is rough cuts for framing. So I'm going to install this blade here in just a moment. Uh, so this saw here, it does have a blade lock. The blade lock is located right here. So what I'm going to do is, I have a couple of wrenches here. This comes with the saw, the manufacturer sends with the saw whenever you buy the saw new. But this is the correct size wrench to fit in here to remove this nut. So I'm going to press my blade lock and rotate my blade hand until it locks. You can feel it lock once it engages. Then this is made to fit up the inside of here and then you can break the nut loose. It's actually got little arrows on here that directs which way to take it off. Which way the threads are. So I'll just remove this. I can let go of that now since it's smooth. Just make sure I put my nut here. And then we have this slot it washer here, make sure it tells you this side up, or this side out rather, so make sure that's very important because it will not tighten up if it's not putting on correctly. So I'll just remove that full plate. Then just make sure there's nothing stuck in there, no chunks of wood or anything like that. Take my new plate, make sure that your teeth are pointing forward. So it'll be this side out. So I'll just put my guard back up. Slide this right back into place. Make sure that I put my washer on with this, this side out. Slide it for that. And I can take my bolt, nut, and put it right back in there. And just secure it with my fingers until it's snug and starts to move the blade. Press my lock back down, and then I'll fill it lock again, put my wrench on there, and turn it the opposite way. Right. So now the blade has been installed, installed correctly. So just check it to make sure there's nothing, no obstructions or anything. Everything seems to be nice and tight. It's all ready to go. 
So now we have our blade installed. Our saw is ready for use. So now we have it ready for use. I'm gonna just move some of this out of the way. And I have my GFCI, my ground fault circuit interrupter. So well, it's got a reset and a test on here. So when I plug it into the wall, it also has a little light here that'll indicate when it does have the power ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and plug it into the wall. And it always has to be at the source. It cannot be at the end of the cord. It has to be plugged in at the source to the wall. So we have no indicator light. Hit reset. Now we have a light. You can hit the test button. So we know it's working properly. I'll just reset it so it's ready to go. Then I'm going to get this really heavy, good 10 gauge cord because it'll hold enough dents for a saw. We're going to burn our saw up. We just want to make sure we use a good heavy duty cord for what we're doing. So, just run this over to here. Let's pull it up. inside of a bigger square. What that means, that means that this saw is double insulated. So like I say, it does not have to have the third ground plug because it is double insulated. So if you ever run into a saw that you know don't have this plug and it's not a double insulated saw, you need to take it out of use immediately because it is not grounded, it's not safe to use. Thank you, have a blessed day.